Hey everyone, so this week I posted this video on my Instagram account and you guys had a bunch of questions on how I did it and I thought it might be fun to kind of walk through and show you what I did. I think what people are intrigued about is how I actually got the car spinning here. And to do that, um, there's actually a site and it used to be, so when I made this originally, it was only available as an app through the App Store, but now they actually have a website and it made it a little bit easier. So here's the website, it's called 3dtuning.com. And essentially what this website does is it allows you to make your car or something similar to that. So I went down to Mustang and I selected the 2015 and then you can go through and you can customize it. So what's cool is you can go in and you can change the different parts on your car and you can also over here you can change the background color. So what I did is I went through and at each different section of the car turning, I went and took a freeze frame of the car. And then what I did is once those freeze frames were loaded, I took those over here into Lightroom. So here is all of the images of the car. So front, and you can see the progression as they turn all the way through to the end. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna click on that first one, click on the last one, and then we're gonna edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And we'll give that a minute to kind of churn through everything. Okay, so Photoshop had a chance to process all of those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on all of those. We're gonna go over to edit, auto align layers, and we're gonna click okay, and we're gonna let Photoshop kind of do its thing. When I took the screen grab, I made sure I left these areas up here as kind of the constant as this would always be changing and potentially the ad would be changing. So the hope is that with this being constant in all the shots that it would be able to auto align off of that. So um, it looks like from the thumbnails we're okay. Actually, Let's try this. So I don't think that that worked initially. So let's try this. Let's go in here. Let's crop. Let's crop this in some. And then we'll crop in this way some as well. And maybe that'll help things. All right, so let's turn those layers back on. We'll click on the first layer, click on the last layer, and then do that one more time. In it, image, auto line layers, click OK. And let's see if that did a little bit better job. Yeah, I think, so I think we're good on that. Um, I did notice we don't need this last one down here, so we'll get rid of that. So now essentially what we have is we have all of those screenshots that I took and it's every angle of the car in that program. So you can kind of see from that post what I did. So now it's how do we get A, the background out and then B, how do we get it spinning? So first let's get it so it's just the green so let's go in and crop again. We'll bring this down to here. And then we'll bring this up to here. So now what we want to do is we need to make a mask to get rid of the green. And we're going to have to do that on all of the layers. So the easiest way to do that is if we go up here to, to select and then we click color range and then we can just sample this color right here. So as you can see, this is going to be your mask. It's similar to the mask that you have over here. Um, what's black is going to be hidden and what's white is going to be shown through. So we actually want to invert that and then we'll click OK and then we're going to make a layer mask out of that. So then if we go down to the next one and we 
want to just do that on all of the layers. Click OK. Same thing. So I'll speed ahead and we'll rejoin once we're at the very end and we have all the layers masked. So what you're, what you're going to want to do is go through all 26 layers and do this same process of going to select, color range, and then click OK and then click on that. Okay, so now we have everything masked out. Um, we have all 26 layers with layer mask applied. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go up here into the window area and we're going to go down here to where it says timeline. So Photoshop has a built-in video feature. Now the disclaimer is that the video features in like Premiere or After Effects work much better than Photoshop. So if you have those, if you have those pieces of software, I definitely recommend using them. They're a lot easier to work with. Um, they're a lot faster. They're optimized for video. Photoshop is optimized for photo editing. Um, so it is a bit laggy, but if you only have Photoshop, this is how you do it. So you're going to click down here where it says create timeline. And then you can see what it's done is all of these layers over here have now been converted into layers over here, but these play over time. So this is how video software works, is you have a playhead here, and as you scrub over, that's what will play on screen. Now, the problem is that there's no break, so all, of you, all you're seeing is layer one. So what we want to do is let's come over, let's come over like three, we'll come over four frames. So right down here you can see this is frames, this is seconds, and then down here is minutes. So there's 30 frames in a second of video. So what we want to do is we want to pull all of these over so all of these clips are just four frames long. This will give us a little bit of a kind of choppy feel video, but that's kind of what I did for that other um, Instagram piece. If you wanted to, if you wanted to make it go super fast, you could adjust the frames, or if you wanted to, you could put more frames in. So we're gonna go through, and all I'm doing is clicking on the edge. When you see that tool, just click and drag it over to the playhead. So again, do that for all of the layers all the way down. Okay, so we have all of our layers trimmed over. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back up to the top and we're gonna offset all of these layers by one. So we'll bring this to here, this to here, and then we'll just do this all the way down. So it should look like stairs when you're done all the way to the end of the layers. So we'll speed this up now. All right, so now if we go back up to the top of the playhead, you will see essentially what we did. We made our car spin around. And one of our it's the third one. So let's go into the third one here. We can hide all of these layers. Let's see what's wrong with that mask because that one looks kind of bad. So we'll go back up to select. We'll hit the color range. We'll click here. Make sure invert is off on this one. We'll click OK. We'll click on the layer mask and we'll click option or alt delete and then that will get rid of that. And then we'll just hit Command D to deselect. And then let's turn on all our layers. And then, so you can see we have our car spinning. 
And if we want, what we can do is we can go over here, we can group these. So now they're all in a group. And then the cool thing is, is you can still put adjustment layers above. So if we want to go into hue and saturation, and let's say we want to go into the greens and get rid of that green color cast, we can click on green, and then we can get rid of that color cast 100%, and if we want to make the greens a little bit darker, we can do that. So now when we scroll through, so as you can see that hue and saturation adjustment layer completely got rid of that uh, green cast. So I think this is probably a good stopping point for this video in today's lesson. There was a lot of steps. Um, in the next section, what I will show you is how I put the photo behind and then place this so it was spinning above. So until next time, take care.